You're blind, aren't you? This movie kind of sucks. Legend of the White Horse is a 1987 Polish-American film which takes place in the fictional European country of Karistan, where a witch named Alta, played by Dee Wallace, lives with her blind daughter Jewel. Jewel has a friend in the form of a white horse, and soon they meet an American visitor, Jim Martin, played by Christopher Lloyd, who is sent to Karistan to prove that an American corporation's investment is not going to harm the environment. What a disappointment this film is. Just two years prior to this, Christopher Lloyd blew our minds in his iconic role of Doc Brown in the Back to the Future. And one year prior, Dee Wallace was momming it up in the campy cult classic, Critters. So what went wrong with this movie? Everything. It's so mundane and dull. Christopher Lloyd's acting, I mean, it seems like it could use a few gigawatts to lighten things up. 1.21 gigawatts. So the movie starts out with some incredibly generic narration about ancient legends centuries ago in Europe, blah blah blah, battles of good and evil, yada yada, and how there's still dark corners of the earth where old legends live. And we cut to Jim Martin and his bratty kid. I'm bored. What am I gonna do? Alright, he's not actually bratty, but his dad sure does act like he is. Remember the game? Uh-huh. Thought you were gonna get it for me. I'm afraid you're gonna have to forget about it for now. Why? Steve, please stop asking me so many questions. That wasn't very nice of you to say. The kid only asked two questions. Calm down, Dad. We find out Jim Martin recently lost his job because he's always getting in trouble because he's, quote, too jumpy, whatever that means. Then some business guy named Frank Brown shows up out of nowhere and offers Jim a job to go to Karistan to do some research on the country because it has rich mineral deposits and something about verifying data so they can, I guess, legally go there and do whatever it is they want to do. Jim agrees and off they go to Karistan and arrive with some issues. Slow down! Dad! Hurry up the truck! What's the matter? You stupid! D. Wallace, as I said, plays a witch, and that doesn't stop Christopher Lloyd from wanting to shack it up with her for a few days, even after being aggressively warned from his local guide. I just thought it would be nice if I could rent a room for myself and my son. This is my home. I do not rent rooms. How dare you tell him I would do such a thing? Witches, bitch. Then there's Jewel, Alta's adopted daughter or something, who is also blind. Jewel can roam around on her own just fine, except for when she has to escape axe-wielding rapists. Yeah, so the white horse, it turns into a silly looking dragon over and over to save Jewel with his laser eyes. And did I mention that Jewel is blind yet? Look, look. Do not move. There's several scenes in this movie that seem forced to pad for a runtime. Like this part where Alta is sitting watching the view from a rock and Christopher Lloyd comes out and says, I can see why you chose this place. It's beautiful. Silence is extraordinary. And then he walks away and the scene ends. That's the whole scene. So does this movie look boring yet? Dad, I'm bored. Let's do something. You do something. I have something interesting to tell. There are caves here. Oh yeah, take the kid to the caves. The caves where you almost got raped. Some are high and some are very big. Hot air comes out of one. Is there any sort of smell that comes out of this hot air cave? To the caves, everybody goes, and here's when we slowly discover some of the villains in the film. Tai Ching is the main one, who we soon find out is actually an ex-lover of Alta, and they join up again to turn on Jewel. Apparently, Jewel is the chosen one. The chosen one of what? I don't think we ever know. 
but they talk about some kind of lair and how Tai Ching has a proper arrow to kill the dragon with, and he says he wants the stones from the lair, and Alta wants the fountain of youth. Blah blah blah, typical generic trope filled fantasy movie stuff. But this isn't a full on fantasy movie, no. It's equalized by the lame political corporate greed let's save the earth environmental message with Frank Brown's company. Frank and Jim argue over the phone because Jim won't lie for the company because it will do damage to Karistan. So what's Frank to do? Call up on his local henchman of course. The the main guy looks like a porn star, and his buddy is not to be messed with, because of an eye patch, of course. The movie then slowly dissolves into an 80s action film, but we don't have any cool hero to get behind. Don't get me wrong, Christopher Lloyd is great as Doc Brown, but he isn't my go-to guy for carrying a movie on his own, especially in this where he's playing a geeky science dad. Where's Sylvester Stallone when you need him? Fuck him. These new henchmen give no Fs because they will do anything to get Jim to sign off on this project. Really? Eight bad guys with machine guns? All because of Christopher Lloyd? So ridiculous. Things get real when Jim's foreign guy gets sniped from his Jeep and gives his last words. Who did this? What happened? <laughs> then, when they can't find the forms needed from Alta's house, Seriously, this is so overboard. Okay, so back to the horse. We have two sets of villains right now, the corporate side and the Tai Ching Alta side. On the horse legend side, only Alta and Tai Ching know about this, right? The corporate side doesn't have a clue about the laser shooting dragon. So why do they try to kill a horse with a machine gun? Like, wow, really? Then Christopher Lloyd gains a few cool points by offing off a few baddies of his own. Skipping ahead a few scenes, the final showdown happens. The dragon roars at Alta, protective of Jewel, and for good reason. Wouldn't she know better not to kill Jewel before killing the dragon? She loses her youth and panics in disgust at her new look. For a kid's movie, it's pretty bleak to kill a blind girl. So that stupid dragon could have given her sight this whole time, but waited until she was stabbed to death. Then the movie ends when Frank Brown is fired by the new mullet rocking owner of the company and Christopher Lloyd drops his knowledge on the press of the whole story. And Jewel goes to live with the family and movie over. Jeez, what a story. I can only imagine what percentage of this budget was wasted on creating the dragon. Please don't waste your time on this one. But hey, there's other opinions out there other than my own. I am a very big horse lover and this was the best Best horse movie I have seen, except for the horse in the gray flannel suit. It has adventure, mystery, rewards, and love. Buy it today!